slightly cranky Maeve today. So let's see how, <laughs> how this class goes. Today we're gonna do a little bit of focus on some lower half of the body stuff. So let's get into it, just a nice quick kind of class that you can make doable in some spare time with your baby. So let's start out and we are going to begin by just coming into a cross leg seated position. And let's stick babe in between your legs. Seated, sitting, she's really enjoying some seating at the moment. And then you can just put your legs around them to hold them up and then put your hands onto them if you need to. Just sit here nice and tall. Let's close your eyes and let's just do a few breaths or you can keep your eyes open and look at your babe too. That's absolutely fine. So I want you to just take a few deep breaths here. Full deep breath in, slow deep breaths out. Good. A couple more. Last one. Good. Blink your eyes back open. And just get a little bit of movement as well in the upper half of the body. Let's see if you can take your arms, stretch them up and over your head. Exhale, twist to the right. You can place one hand on your knee, turn, look back over your right shoulder, and then come back to the center. Inhale, stretch your arms, reach up. Exhale, twist the other direction. Do it again. Inhale, arms, stretch up, reach high. Exhale, twist. Come back to the center. Inhale, the arms reach up high. Last one, exhale, twist to the other direction. Good, and then inhale, stretch your arms, reach all the way up. Okay, now let's take your legs. And so whether your baby is sitting up or lying them down in between your legs here, you're gonna bring your legs up and out to the sides. So kind of uh, quite wide apart. It was, it was they would, your feet would be off of your mat. So you don't want them too close together. And then you're just gonna lean back here a little bit. And then from here, try to keep your hips on the floor. You're just gonna roll your legs in and out, in and out. So she's a little bit too close so I can't quite roll my legs so much. So either you lie them down, or if they can sit up fairly good on their own, just kind of scoot them a little bit further away from you. Yeah, okay. great. Yeah, great. Okay, so then you're just gonna roll your legs down, in and out, in and out. So basically what we're working on here is a little internal, external rotation of your, your hip joint. Okay, so in and out, in and out. And you'll notice for myself, my, my left hip is a little kind of tighter than the other, the other hip. So one might be able to, and you won't be able to necessarily get your knees down to the floor. I'm definitely not able to. I could if I lifted my hip off the ground, but I want you to keep your hips on the ground as you rock your legs side to side. So we're just kind of warming up into the hip joint here. So rocking it side to side, side to side, side to side. Okay, then come back to the center. So here, I want you to grab onto your ankles. Here, Boo, you want that? Yeah. Grab onto your ankles. Your arms are gonna be on the insides of your legs. So we're gonna do just a little bit of strengthening for this inner line of your, of your adductors, the muscles that are very closely linked and connected to your pelvic floor, okay? So especially post-birth, your pelvic floor um, may be a little bit weak because of birth or you know just being pregnant anyways, puts a lot of pressure down onto your pelvic floor. So while kegels are you know kind of the commonly prescribed thing, they're, they're good, but they're not the only thing you can do. And also kegels might not be necessarily what you should be doing. Um, I'll talk about that at a, a later point but you want to strengthen all the muscles around your pelvic floor. So your adductor muscles, these muscles on the inside of the legs, are very closely linked, threaded into your, your pelvic floor. Same with your glutes and things like that. So we're gonna do a few things that are gonna be kind of uh, nice accessory things for your pelvic floor to help you get more strength, okay? So you're gonna put your hands onto your ankles. Now, I'll just explain it first. You're gonna start first by using your arms and elbows and you're gonna push your legs down. So if I push them down, they can go down here. But at the same time, I want your knees to squeeze up and in. So you're resisting the push down, so you're creating this isometric contraction. Are you okay? So 
Let's do one round here. Grabbing onto the ankles, you're gonna take your elbows, push down into your knees, knees are gonna push in. So you're creating this resistance. So you really feel the inner adductors are turning on and working. So you should feel the insides of the legs working. Even your biceps are like squeezing, trying to really use your arms to push down as the knees push in. Hold this here, just try to do it kind of as hard as you can. Hold for five, two, four, three, two, one, and then you're gonna release your elbows. Keep your hands on your ankles. And now you're not gonna use your elbows to push down, but I want you to drive your knees down towards the floor and out to the side. Push them down as much as you can. Don't let your feet move in. Keep your feet where they are. And then you just sit tall, get a little longer in your spine. As your knees try to push down towards the floor and hold this for five. Really feel your hips working. Four, three, two, one, slowly release the legs, okay? And if your legs don't push down and out quite as far as mine, don't worry. I do have quite a more flexible uh, hips, especially with the external rotation of my hips when my knees are opened out. And yours might not be quite like that, so don't worry if you're not the same as mine. Rock your legs again, left, right, left, right, just warming up those hips. Again, remember, keep your pelvis, keep your sit bones, on the floor as you do this. And we're gonna do one more set of that. Okay, so come back to the center. Grab onto the ankles. Again, arms, elbows push down into the legs. Legs squeeze up against it. And then we're gonna push as hard as you can, hold here for five. Create this isometric contraction. Your muscles are working. Four, three, two, squeeze harder, one, Okay, and then release, but keep your hands on your ankles. Now drive your knees down and out. Try to push them down and out, squeeze towards the outside. Get your spine taller, longer. Arms can be straight, sitting up nice and tall. Push down, press your knees towards the floor. Hold here, five, four, three, two, one, and then slowly release. And then I want you just to kind of butterfly your legs, jiggle them a little side to side, side to side, up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, so a little bit of work on those inside of the legs, these, these adductor muscles, which squeeze in. Um, from here, so let's bring yourself up. Hi, Lulu, you okay? Let's bring yourself up. I want you to actually come into a squat position, okay? So if this is not so easy for you, <laughs> I want you to grab a block or something that you can sit on and you're gonna put it under your hips so that you can kind of come into this, uh, maybe a supported squatting position. Okay, and we're gonna use the baby now. Okay, so this one's not necessarily so easy. So you can, if you if you have a little bit more strength, use your baby. My little boo is, uh, well, she's about 10 kilos now, nearly. So she's a, a little bit heavy, so it might not be doable for you. So you can use your babe or not. Totally up to you. Maybe start without your baby. <laughs> and we're going to do a couple squats, okay? So if you've got the block here, we're sitting here, and you can work first just kind of pushing your knees opening out. Um, baby can be on the floor or somewhere in front of you. I'm just going to hold her now because she's about to, she's about on the turn. Nap time's not too far away. So I'm just, I just want you to sit here and you can kind of push your knees open and out and maybe lifting your chest up. Um, if you didn't have, if you weren't holding your baby, you can kind of twist and turn and look up and then lift your opposite arm up, look up over your shoulder. And then if you do the other side, so we just get a little bit of twisting in, which is always great for that upper spine. And then doing the other side, your arm pushes down and out and then you twist, look up over the other way. So this is working a little bit in your upper thoracic spine. And then maybe you do it one more time each side. Just get you back over there, give you a little something fun to do. And then switch over to the other side. Okay, now we're gonna do a little bit of a squat, okay? So you can use baby or not. She usually likes this. So just gonna grab onto her facing towards you or facing away from you. Either works. She likes to face away so she can see stuff often. And then we are going to try to lift up. Okay, so 
As you come down, you don't have to go all the way down if you don't feel too strong for it. You can just come part way down. But if you are able to, you have the mobility for it. Ankles are a big impact into this. So it's not always uh, hips. You can come down a little bit further toward the floor. So let's try to do six to eight squats with your baby. Three. So really use your breath as you do this. So you want to inhale, lower down, exhale, squeeze and stand up. Okay, inhale, maybe you lower, exhale, squeeze and stand up. A couple more. Squeeze and stand. Let's do two. Squeeze and stand. One more. And then lift and up. Okay, so now from here, let's just lower babe down to the floor. And we're gonna come to a little bit of ankle and big toe. Hi! <laughs> Not loving the floor today. Yeah! Hey, Bill. So, she's not having that, <laughs> so we're gonna hold her. Okay, <laughs> so you're gonna come to a wall, okay? So, actually, if you have a a brick or a book, something that you can stand on. We're gonna do some calf stretching. So your calves can get really tight and it can impact the whole line of your body, okay? So, and also when you're holding your baby, you wanna make sure that you try not to jut your hips forward. It's so easy, it's so easy to do that, but you want to stack your parts. So get your ribs stacked over your hips, over your heels. I digress, but so, you're gonna step onto a block, a book, whatever you have, and then you're just going to stretch your calf. So my block is quite high, so my other foot, I can't bring it quite so forward. So I'm just trying to stand level or your other foot jutting forward. And then you keep your legs straight so you really feel this into the back of your calf. And then we're just gonna breathe. So you can adjust it a little bit. So again, try not to bend your knee it does take the stretch lower down into your into the back of your ankle, kind of. I want you to keep your legs straight, straight as possible. And then we're just gonna do a little bit more of some isometric work. You right, Boo? So what I want you to do here is that you're going to pretend like you're gas pedaling, pressing your foot into the block or whatever object you have under your foot. So in three, two, one, start to press your toes down into your object. So you're creating a bigger, feeling kind of bigger stretch in the back of your calf. Hold here, keep pressing down, five, four, three, two, one. Now try to lift your toes, try to lift your foot off the block. Keep your legs straight, so don't bend it. And then try to like you're lifting your, your foot off the block. Squeeze like you're squeezing something in between the top of your foot and your shin. Like you're trying to squeeze the ball. Hold for five, four, three, two, one, and then slowly release. And then just stay here, and then maybe you can get a little deeper stretch by stepping forward a little bit more. Hey, and hold. Okay, for pretty much everybody, they need to stretch their calves more, more often than you think. Now, let's do the other side. So let go, and then just kinda circle your ankle a little bit do a few circles, and then let's do the other side. So grab your the other foot, step onto your block, and then just adjust yourself. Just doing a little bit different angles, so maybe you can see. So I'm kind of a little bit level. So you're keeping your legs straight. Try not to like shift your hips back, because the more you shift your hips back, you're taking it out of that stretch into your calf. So you want to be stacked and you know hips a little bit more forward. And then just stretching, holding here, and then we're gonna do a little isometric work. So in three, two, one, start to drive your foot down into the block. Push the foot down, press down, like you're gas pedaling your foot into your block or your book or whatever you have under your foot. Press down a little bit harder, feel this stretch intensify in the back of the calf. Hold for five, four, three, two, one, 
now try to lift your foot, lift your toes off the block. It's not going to, because you're in end range, but I want you to try, just maybe your toes will lift off the block. And like you have a ball that you're squeezing in between your shin and the top of the foot. Squeeze up, hold, five. Four, three, two, one, release, and then just stretch and maybe step your other foot a little bit further forward and intensify the stretch in the back of that calf. Hold here. All right, very good. And then go ahead and release. Okay, last one that we're gonna do here is all about your toes and specifically your big toes. So, all right, now your big toe is directly linked to the pelvic floor. So you want to have your big toe be autonomous from your other toes, meaning you should be able to lift your big toe off the floor independent of the other toes. So if you're standing here, I want you to, and if you're holding your baby, you have to maybe adjust a little bit, but look at your toes, and then I want you to try and lift just your big toe. So lift just the big toe up, and then lower it down. And as you lift your big toe, try not to move your ankles. Don't let your ankles cave out to the sides, okay? So you lift big toe and lower. Try to lift your big toe up and lower. One more time, big toe up and then lower. See if you can keep big toe down, lift the outer four toes up, lower. Keep the big toe down, lift the outer four toes up, lower. Last one, big toe down, outer four toes up, hold. Okay, and then lower it down. So if that was hard and you're like, how in the world do you do that? That is definitely something that you can benefit so much from to work on. I'll talk about toes maybe in another video, a little bit longer video specifically on toes. But when you walk, about 70 to 80% of the force is generated from the big toe pushing off, okay? And how you walk influences how you stack your body and influences the pelvic floor and all these things. So as I mentioned, there's a direct line and link between your big toe and your pelvic floor. So working on your big toe, if you have pelvic floor issues, is probably a very good place to start. So, uh, because I don't have a corner of the wall here, I'm just gonna use this block here. And what you wanna do is you're gonna put your big toe, take that toy off the way, your big toe up onto the edge of a wall, or like I have this block here, and then the other four toes fall down. So you're getting a big stretch into the base of the big toe. And then again, I'm gonna step forward, so I wanna really intensify that stretch into the bottom of the big toe side, okay? So we'll hang out here for a little bit, just feeling that, that stretch. So same thing we did with the calves, where we gas pedal down. I want you to think driving your big toe into the edge of the wall, or like this, into a block pushed into the wall. So let's begin. Three, two, one. Big toe is going to drive forward, pushing into the wall, like you're trying to press your big toe through the wall. Keep driving it forward. Try to just push as hard as you can. Five. Four, three, two, one, and then release. And now try to lift the big toe off of the block. It's not going to, but you're trying to squeeze stuff on the top front side of that big toe. Try to lift the big toe, try to squeeze it up, lift it up, hold here, five, four, three, trying to lift away, two, one, and then release. And then you can reset. So slide your foot up a little bit higher. Try to slide it down so you get an even bigger stretch. And then move forward, pause, and then just hold that stretch. Okay, so this, we're only gonna do this one time, but this is something really good to do uh, several times throughout the day. Maybe definitely do it again, but for time's sake today, we're just gonna move on and over to the other, other big toe. Okay, so holding it here, and now I'm gonna release, and then I'm gonna switch sides, and then I'm gonna come to the other foot. So this one's about ready to erupt. So let's finish off with this last foot, and then we'll be good. So now I'm gonna come forward. I'm placing my big toe onto the wall, or this block, something, so that my other toes slide down. And then I'm gonna step forward, and then I'm gonna lean forward so I really get that stretch onto the bottom of that foot. We're gonna hold here the stretch just for a little while. Okay, and then we're gonna do that gas pedal. So three, two, one, start to drive your big toe, pushing it into the block or the wall, whatever you've got here. Drive it in, press it in, push as hard as you can, gas pedal that big toe down, hold five. Four, three, two, 
One, now you're gonna try to lift the big toe off. Don't shift your hips back, don't shift anything back. You're just trying to lift the big toe off, okay? So you're squeezing again, top of the foot, right on the top of the, the big toe, trying to take your big toe towards your shin. Try not to let your ankles move, we're really just working on big toe. Hold it, squeeze it up, five, four, three, two, one, slowly release, and then readjust. So slide that big toe up the wall or your block a little bit more, slide it down so it's like you get a bigger, bigger stretch into the bottom of the foot, and the bottom of that big toe, and then shift forward a little bit further, hold that, four, three, two, one, and then slowly release. Hey, boo boo. Step away, and then your, your toes will feel a little bit funny. What you can do is just kind of take a little, little walk around and notice, see how that feels on your big toe. Notice, maybe you just notice your big toe a little bit more as you walk and feel this little extra push off. And then we're just gonna come to seated, however you need to. Pop down, I'm gonna set her down. She's probably gonna freak out in a second. So last thing you wanna do is I want you to try it again. So feet out wide, kind of like we did before. And then try to lift your big toe up. Big toe only, and then lower it down. And then again, try to lift the big toe up, lower it down. Last one, big toe up, and then lower it down. So hopefully after doing the big toe isometric work where we were pushing down, lifting up, you should ideally be able to a little bit easier to segment out moving just your big toe. It might just be a little bit easier to do that. So again, work on your big toe. Your big toe strength has a very direct line to your inner leg adductors and into your pelvic floor. So a, a strong big toe, <laughs> a strong big toe that can move independently relates to a more healthy, supple pelvic floor, okay? So, I hope you enjoyed this class, and let me know if you have any questions, and I'll probably do another video just about big toes a little bit later. Thanks, guys.